Uh, just ahead of us here is our checkout point. Supervisor's looking over one of the pigs right now. Pigs? That's, uh, that's short for piggyback, huh? Right. That's because they can be separated and loaded directly on the flatbed railroad cars. Civilians call them trailers. As you hear, that's one of our drivers hooking up a tractor to a reefer pig. <laughs> a reefer pig? Refrigerated trailers. The others we call dry pigs. Mr. Anderson, your wife on the phone for you. All right. Long Street, just stay glued here for a minute. Thanks to someone. This dude must be blind or something, Mr. Anderson. I've been pushing on these things for 22 years. I never had an accident. Dork. He is blind. You're afraid to look in your ear mirror, Mr. Thorpe, so that you see your own ugly face? Now, just a minute, Jackowitz. We're in the office, Thorpe. I've got some OK booze inside. Goes for you, too, Jackowitz. No, no, thanks. Uh, Mr. Jackowitz, was it? Still is. Which a minute ago, I, I wasn't so sure it would be. Yeah, well, I want to thank you. For making me a hero? For that, I, I should thank you. <laughs> we haven't had an accident in a year. I hate to see you break our record, Longstreet. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, Miss Kay, that's fine. For a toast. I see a toast and a gift. Uh, it's a birthday. Mm -hmm. On this day in 1861, Jefferson Davis was elected president of the Confederacy. And I forgot a card. Oh. If it's not too much trouble, I would like to talk about the case, Mike. One man's gift is a housekeeper's mess. <laughs> Anderson, uh... Showed you around the yard himself. Huh? Mm-hmm. I'm practically the authority on the trucking business. How big a claim, Bill? 500,000. Ooh, that's a lot of lemonade. What are we after? 32 pigs, 15,000 each. Pigs? That's uh, trade jargon for piggybacks. Oh, you can always tell a friend. Well, you know, Nicky, those big tractor-trailer rigs. 
The trucking outfit is minus 32 of its trailers. Those huge monsters stolen? Sure, why not? I can name you a railroad that had, uh, what, 300 free cars swiped? At least. Mike, are you going to take the case? Now, here's the gimmick. See if I can... Yeah, there it is. See, I press this little buzzer here, and it sounds right in the back of the bullseye. Uh -huh. So I aim the dart right at the sound, huh? <laughs> okay, Nikki, yeah, where? Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, here. Hold on there, let me get the pot down. go out of your way to irritate me, or is it just something that comes naturally? Let's see, Duke. Uh, 2% plus 10,000 bonus. 2%? That's, uh... How'd I do? <laughs> Anderson spends a lot of time at the house, doctor's orders. Must be serious. Heart attack last month. But he showed you around the yard. Well, he doesn't strike me as an easy man to tie down. You like him, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, Irv. Irv, you're a marvelous business manager. You're faithful to your wife. You show up at church on Sundays. Will you please shut up, Mr. But Irv, Executive? With seven lawyers telling me I'm almost bankrupt, you're a luxury. Excess baggage, dead weight. He hung up. Mr. Leopold for the union called. Miss Sunshine. Maybe you can also give last rites. I'm supposed to inform Mr. Anderson. But can't you afford a warmer stethoscope? But your blood's running cold. Oh. Well, Longstreet, you should feel right at home in this investigation, considering how blind we must all be to allow thievery on such a grand scale. You uh, recuperate in style, Mr. Anderson. Excellent. Tradition, Miss Bell. Anderson and his ilk won't stop until they're about as productive as a no-return bottle. Dr. Kenbrook is our resident grouch. He'll derail whatever cures you. All right, sit down, Miss Bell. Well, thank you. Tell me something. Does my age, poor health, and poverty detract from my sexuality? <laughs> Ignore me. I have to keep pretending I'm just as alive as the next guy. You won't be if you keep running out to check on that business of yours. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Nonsense. Who could have given you a more colorful and informative tour? Mr. Anderson, uh, somebody out to slit your commercial throat. Any businessman who doesn't have an enemy is retired, a failure, or deceased. Two out of three ain't bad. Personal enemies. Uh, put the list in alphabetical order, Jordan. Miss Sunshine, will you see the doctor out and lock the door after him? From now on, you'll nap from two to five every day. Who's handling my formula? I insult him, he overcharges me. Well, what have you got? Uh, nothing. I'm trying to figure out how it was done and work on who. Not to mention where 32 piggybacks can be hiding out. Well, those trailers could be standing in an open field at high noon with the entire state militia looking right at them, and nobody would know the difference. That's right. Fresh paint, new license plates, registration numbers, some other company's tractor hauling them. I got it. You see that scale model of a pig in a tractor over there? Uh, about five feet, Mike, three o'clock. Pax, right. Oh, Tell me everybody does that. Everybody. Those tractors are really hard to tell apart to begin with. They're not accounted for like jewels in a safe. You might say they exist only on paper. How about security at the railroad piggyback ramps? Well, we doubled security when Ward discovered that we were being robbed, but double zero, still nothing. Ward? Ward Blakeman, our controller. You seem to like that model. That's what we call a yard goat. Holds trailers around the yard. It's yours. Oh, Kim. Sorry I took so long. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Anderson. Your husband's been keeping us busy. You like Jordan's toys, do you, Mr. Longstreet? Uh, Kim, is that uh, bottle what I think it is? Yes, Yugoslavian peach brandy. It was a gift to my husband and myself on our honeymoon three years ago. From Marshal Tito himself, are you impressed? Even more so by your paintings. Thank you. I noticed the signature. Yeah, Nikki says you're very talented. 
That qualifies as a hand-me-down compliment, Mr. Longstreet. Uh, Kim, maybe we... Uh, I would like to see some more of your work. Fine. I'm afraid as an artist, I qualify in the uh, full movie category. Mike, I won't try to ignore the obvious. Kim's been taking all the setbacks in stride. In the last few days. Here, taste this. Oh, thank you. Oh, I guess it's getting to a business bear, this hard thing. Now those pigs being stolen. At first, I thought it was me who had to teed off. Now, she's been cutting away as you all evening. About the pigs, Mr. Anderson. I'm looking for a, for a handle, something personal, strange behavior patterns. Uh, quack phone calls, a nervous secretary who suddenly quits. Now, I've got a secretary who won't quit, and... What? Forget it, it's nothing important. Something to do with Ward Blakeman? How'd you pick up on that? Well, at dinner this evening, your wife, uh, she wondered why you hadn't invited him. Your answer was... Pass the butter. Okay, Mike, a couple of days ago, I had a call from Ward and said he wanted to take the day off. Under the circumstances, his timing was lousy. I told him so, hung up on him. And he handles your inventory, right? It was Ward who discovered the first missing pigs. Longstreet. She seems to be cutting away at you this evening. Mr. Longstreet, we have milk and cookies and grapes and hot chocolate. Mm. Mrs. Kay, why would a why would an attractive, sophisticated woman marry a man 30 years older than herself? Money. Uh, is it really that simple? Maybe she never knew her dad, and she's uh, looking for a father image. Sugar daddy, you mean? Still money. No, I'll, I'll have the strawberry. You know, Mrs. K, I found out something about myself. I don't like not being liked. <laughs> or talking to myself. Yes, we have 40 units, Mr. Longstreet. I can't rightly tell you much who comes and goes. Mm -hmm. My associate's parking the car. I should be along any minute. And uh, we'll lock off Mr. Blakeman's park. Yes, certainly. And I, I'll keep an eye out. As well, you if say. you mind, give me an idea of the layout of this park. Certainly. Uh, there are two steps here into a small foyer. Living room is to the left and the bedroom to the right. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Max, here we go. Forward. is overflowing. Ah, uh, Nikki. Listen, uh, Nikki, see if you can uh, see if there's a bar in the living room there. Uh, yeah, uh, about uh, 12 paces straight ahead. See if there's a white bottle of cream of mint on it, will you? Uh -huh. Ha ha, showing off again. No, no, I can't smell it. I ran a fast check on Ward Blakeman, found out his favorite drink was white cream of mint and soda. I do on the cap stock. No bed. Okay, come on in here. Let's see if we can find some luggage. Oh, there's a shelf full. Oh? How about a two-suitor shaving kit? Mm, they're both here. Day off, Anderson said. Well, Blakeman hasn't been here. That much is true enough, but for several days at least. Why would a man leave town without taking his toothbrush, electric shaver, shaving kit, and his luggage? His car is gone. You change your perfume, Nikki? No, I'm not wearing any. Heavy? Oh, well, pervasive. This whole wardrobe. There's no Mrs. Blakeman. No, oh, but there's a Mrs. Anderson. It's her brand.
Rotators may not be the fastest in the world, but they are the best. Well, let's face it, Duke, owning 3,600 of those trailers must be a bookkeeping problem. Even so, Mike, Blakeman should have spotted those thefts weeks before he reported them to Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I retire, it's going to be one of those little English villages. I'm going to spend my days drinking ale and throwing darts in the local pub. <laughs> At nights, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll chase Agatha Christie. The rage you're moving on this case, my friend. You'll never catch her. Duke, uh, Blakeman's gone. He's, uh, disappeared. His passport's expired. He hasn't taken any flights originating from New Orleans. Hasn't used one of his dozen different credit cards. I've, uh, got the police out looking for him now. Suppose, um, he was on to something. Or somebody. And he killed him. Or maybe he saw the handwriting on the wall and, uh, Decided to cushion himself against the inevitable crash. You mean he may have had something to do with the missing trailers? Well, could be. All right, let's, um... Let's embellish that a bit. Suppose... Suppose Anderson is lying. About what? Well, suppose he and Blakeman worked this whole thing out together. Anderson tries to throw us off the track by saying Blakeman held back telling him about the thefts. No. You seem skeptical. Hey, you know what Nietzsche said about great minds. <laughs> How was that when he called? He said great minds are always skeptical. Okay. Can Nietzsche explain how those trailers, uh, pigs or whatever, are being stolen? Uh, sure, Duke. I mean, any driver can hook up a trailer to a tractor in five minutes. And just drive off with it? No, no, no. Coming or going, you have to go through a checkpoint. Security. Oh, faith. The supervisor, let's say someone like Jackowitz, uh, if he recognizes the driver, then just waves him on through. So any uh, familiar driver can just hook on to a $15,000 trailer, drive off with it, and uh, pedal it to the highest bidder. Mike, uh, I found it, the one you described. Oh, good, good. Hello, Nikki. You didn't want it delivered, did you? No. Hello, Nikki. Oh, no, no, I'll take it myself. Hello, Nikki. Is a cab okay? Because I've got to get my hair Oh, finished. sure, sure, go ahead. Okay. One of them is blind, the other one's deaf. It's a thing of rare beauty. I thank you, Mr. Longstreet. <laughs> Congratulate you on your taste. <laughs> no, on my memory, Mr. Jackowitz. When I first saw that set, I couldn't afford it. I am not worthy. And you must not call me Mr. Jackowitz. Uh, Max, uh, short for Maximilian. After Emperor's my good parents name me. <laughs> so what am I called? Jack. Jack who inspects pigs. But a man of my ancestry, it's a strange business. Only the family calls him Max. And very special friends. Here, eat, Mr. Longstreet. Uh, thank you. It smells wonderful. Ah, and that either comes from the smartest nose in town. Here, have one. Oh, thanks. How did you, uh, how did you know I was a chestnut? Trade secret. Then I'm not supposed to tell him that you called and asked me? Hmm. Stripped of my mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Please excuse me, Mr. Longstreet, and, and eat some more. Thank you very much. Mr. Longstreet, your generous gift I will enjoy all my life. But please tell me why. And tell me, uh, how could I help you? You don't answer. How could I help you? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Jack, uh, Max, uh, a rig can't get out of Anderson's yard without passing through the checkpoint. You're the supervisor. <laughs> and my walls, Mr. Longstreet, hang genuine Rembrandts. Take my word for it. You walk on Persian carpets in my home. You dine on caviar. Well, I'm not accusing you of anything. It's just that I thought maybe you could give me some help. Twice I asked how. Mr. Longstreet? Those stolen pigs, they must be getting, must be getting cleaned, fresh paint, new license plates. Where's that kind of thing done? All over the country. Hundreds of places. I could make you a list. 
Uh, yes, please. I know that sound, Nikki. It was a, a rhythmic sound, like machinery. What about a potter's wheel? Maybe Mrs. Jackowitz has some kind of hobby. Well, it'll come to me. Nikki, what'd you think of Kim Anderson? Something about you sure bugged her. Pure hostility. Mm. Toward me personally, or what I might uncover. Well, if Blakeman and she are messing around, don't count on a Christmas card from her. Anderson said she turned moody very suddenly. Just about the time Ward Blakeman got lost. Mike, this whole case is weird. I mean, who buys hot pigs? Well, the world is full of bargain hunters. It's not polite to stare, Mrs. Anderson. Now I'm supposed to ask you how you knew I was here, much less staring. No, oh, Nikki spotted you. About the staring, the, uh, the sound of your palette knife scraping against the canvas, it stopped the minute I approached. And you haven't moved a muscle. Your voice is coming from about four feet above the ground. I'm also available for weddings, bar mitzvahs, children's birthday parties. And the color of my eyes? Brown. That's very good. No, no, that's uh, playing the odds. I was talking to Ward Blakeman today. That was a lie, Kim. I had to be sure I didn't know any other way. When's the last time you saw Blakeman? It's after five. I, I believe Jordan will be up by now. These afternoon naps always leave me feeling like I gave too much of the blood bank. No, Nicky? Oh, she's out stealing some of your flowers. Mr. Anderson, you, uh, you said Ward Blakeman told you he was taking the day off. I think you lied. Huh? You probably even know my driver's license expired. <laughs> okay, I'll confess. I have no idea what happened to Ward, and I'm worried. The man who's been with you from the very beginning suddenly disappears, and all you do is worry. That's right. When he's an officer of a company fighting for its life, if I let it leak that my controller had pulled a vanishing act on me, I'd be just kindling the flames. Could he be my target, but you're covering for him? Negative. Well, he's in a position to juggle the inventories. Mike, aren't you running the wrong way? With me tied down by Kenbrook's soul-free routine, Ward might have pieced something together, rattled a few sabers on his own to keep from burdening you. Ah, it's not so far-fetched. No, it's out of character for an accountant. Look who's talking. There are over 300 men who work as regular drivers at Anderson's yard. 11 of them have records, mostly for being drunk and disorderly. Pretty like uh, Marty Thorpe, huh? Thorpe? Yeah, he's the one who almost backed me into oblivion. Oh, I'm you. still waiting to be dazzled. Uh, see if this helps. It always does, thanks. Have the police got anything yet on Blakeman or his car? <clears throat> Not a thing. Well, they mean well. You know, I think we've all been coy long enough. A show of hands, please. How many think Ward Blakeman is dead? Well, you've got one. Medium rare, please. Who? Why, Duke? Who? Anderson, or someone he paid. Why? Anderson and Blakeman realize their company is in big financial trouble. One or both suggest selling off the trailers, pocketing the receipts, and collecting the insurance. Paranoia. Duke, there have to be some people who aren't out to take the insurance companies. What are you trying to do, put us all out of work? Phase two. Anderson discovers his pretty young wife is having an affair with Ward Blakeman. Solution? He eliminates the conjugal competition and pockets the plunder himself. In one fell swoop. Right. Mike? Well, that's a paragon of logic, Duke. Except Anderson's a fighter. I can't see him giving up by selling out. And he has a heart condition that keeps him from his office and the tennis courts. And his wife's bed. He is not a well man. What's your point? 
because of that, I deliberately look the other way? I'm going to stick it right to you, Mike. You are empathizing. All right, I'm empathizing, and I'm trapped, because I can't come out of this feeling right without proving my hunches are all wrong. Well, that's my gut hang-up. It's going to affect absolutely nothing. Now, how did that get there? Mrs. Kingston! Vitamin deficiency, maybe. I figure vitamin A for Anderson. You've taken an overdose, Mike. All right. All right, I dig the guy, and uh, I dig your theory. You bellowed, Mr. Longstreet? <laughs> well, no matter. While you were playing male chauvinist, I answered the phone. It's a Mrs. Anderson. You were right about Ward and me. I've been out of my mind with worry. He never would have stayed away this long without contacting me. Now, why call me? Because I think Jordan knew about us. Found out somehow. I think Jordan had Ward killed. And did it again, huh? Mm-hmm. Wide open. I don't understand it. A properly balanced diet, which I provide, should keep you from getting hungry so soon. Oh, it's just an old habit I picked up after I left the hospital. You ever been hospitalized, Mrs. K, and uh, trying to get a bedtime snack? I don't know if I were a doctor. First thing I'd do is make sure everybody had... That's where I heard it. A hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Duke, that, uh, that sound I heard at Jackowitz was one of those dialysis units. Listen, uh, Mike, I'm trying to clear my desk so I can get a full weekend and... Wait a minute. Dialysis? You mean Mrs. Jackowitz is on one of those kidney machines? That's right. Without that unit, she'd be dead. Any idea how much they cost? And a man in Jackowitz's position could never afford one, so he's being paid off to let our pig rustler clear his checkpoint, hmm? And what can I do about it? What can you do about it? I'll tell you what you can do about it. You can demand that he start naming names. Or what? Expose him? Nail him because he put his head on the block to keep his wife alive? Come on, Duke. All right. All right, let's, uh, let's both sleep on it. He's, uh, he's only a cog at best, and I'm after the whole machine. All right, I'll talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Afraid. I thought about you. I said to myself, Max, for a man who's blind, who has so difficult a job, he has to be one very smart man. Too smart, Max, for him not to know you're involved in this terrible thing. Mr. Jackowitz, why are you here? You ask that. I ask that. Who will answer? I don't know. You feel guilty. But you'd feel even more guilty if you confessed to one crime. 
for me to commit another. The murder of my wife. How clearly, Mr. Longstreet, you, you see things. You're blind to all distractions. And so the truth reveals itself. That list I gave you with the names of all the places where the trailers could be refurbished. Yes, yes, I know. The uh, insurance company, they're already checking that out. I left one out. Where? Mr. Longstreet, you have your job to do. We can't trust each other. We're just men. What I did, I, I did for my wife, not myself. The work is done in Marquette. Marquette. Yes, I think we've done some business there. Any special reason? Well, I'm going to need the dispatcher's record of every driver that's made that run in the last few months. All right. How soon? <laughs> Ten to one, you can't do that again. Forget it. You can't afford to lose. I'll have those records by five this afternoon if you can repeat that stunt. If I do it with a cue ball, can I have the list by four? For that, three o'clock. Plus a night on the town as soon as you... Cue ball has more chalk. <laughs> and the aim? Sound of your voice. Let's do it better. Rent a car to get to the market yard, Nicky. You'll be looking for a lot of piggybacks with nice, fresh paint. Sneak up to some of them. Find the emblem and see if it isn't covering a different emblem, like Anderson's, for instance. Mike, this is your man in Marquette. <laughs> I found some darling trailers. New registration numbers, fresh paint. Oh, uh, what's, the, what's the signature of the, uh, the emblem? Oh, a lot of different ones, but on some I could feel the old emblem underneath the new paint. The outline was raised. Plain as Braille. Anderson's. So, someone hauls the stolen trailer to Marquette, where it gets facelift. Drives the tractor back to Anderson's yard, hooks on another trailer, and repeats the whole routine. Okay, we'll plant someone in the yard at Marquette. Then all you nail is the driver. Right now, he looks like a trophy worth mounting. Duke, whoever's guiding this operation has access to information it would take years to acquire. Inside? Has to be. I'd say we're back to Anderson, but that seems to bug you. Well, maybe I'm wrong about him, but it's, well, it's just that he's got too much life in him to be cut down now. Empathy or not, if he's our boy, we hang him. <laughs> Sure, come on in. I've got some, uh, got some talking brandy inside. And, uh, I got to thinking. I haven't really stopped thinking. I suppose all my intuitions are wrong, and Jordan doesn't know about Ward and me. What I mean is I said some very foolish things to you, and I don't want you repeating them to Jordan. I haven't, I won't. Uh, ready for some more? What is it? I don't know. I don't know what it is you've done to me. I've been less than half alive since... since Ward disappeared, and I've been angry ever since the first day I saw you. You angry with me, Kim? Yes. But why? Well, we have a lot in common. How? You're a man and you're blind. I lost something very precious. You're losing the man you love. That's our common bond, Kim, the enormity of our losses. You mean Ward. No, I don't mean Ward. I mean your husband. You married him. I think you loved him. Most people think I married him for his money. Lots of younger men with money. I was alone. I had nothing. Jordan gave me everything. Now. And now he may die because he won't stop living. He'll be alone again. 
How do you get off being so, so well-adjusted, so resigned? Dear God in heaven, you're blind and you're almost joyous about it. You're an exhibitionist. You seem to shout, look at me, world. They tore out my vision and I can laugh as loud as any of you. And that's what you resent. You're jealous. Of what? Of me. Because I'm learning to accept. Or at least I'm learning the illusion of acceptance. Kim, even time betrays you. It, it doesn't heal as promised. You never fully accept. You never really forget. You simply learn to put up one hell of a front. Remember that 20 you mentioned to keep an eye out? Yeah, I remember. That fellow, uh, Blakeman, well, he's back. Trying to keep a daily tab sheet on all 3,600 of our rigs is like, uh, Counting ants on a couple of sugar cubes. But it looked like we'd been losing several a month for quite a while. So you tried following it up yourself? Well, I got the idea that Jordan himself was engineering the thefts. He was sick. The company was sick. I didn't want to believe it, but I had to find out. The trailers are overhauled in Marquette. I followed one and got, got knocked into a gully by some road hog that left me for dead. I was. I was out of it for about three days in a little Texas town. I considered staying out of it indefinitely. Because of Kim? How, how'd you know? Uh, she told me. Well, I, I thought about her. And I thought about Jordan and what the two of us would inevitably do to him. Now, she thinks Jordan already knows about you. No, no, that would kill Jordan. She doesn't realize yet how much he loves her. I was just a stopgap. It took me all this time to make the decision. Kim and I... We've got to end it right now. I owe too much to her husband to do this to him. This 80-proof booze isn't getting to me. Oh, maybe you're expecting too much from it. Blakeman, you sure what happened to you was an accident? You know something I don't? Describe the car. Yellow car with a white vinyl top, possibly a four-door model. Is that all he had on it? <laughs> Blakeman was praying at the time. Hi, Duke. Morning. Hi. It was Thorpe's car. Martin Thorpe. Mm hmm. Thorpe, who backed into Mike at the yard? It must be a sideline with him. Vehicular homicide. Whatever turns you on. What turned you on to it? Well, I don't always take your advice, baby. My man in Marquette has been doing a little snooping. Marty Thorpe and a couple of his pals have been holding the piggybacks there. Well, you didn't nail them, did you? Of course not. They're just delivery boys. We want their boss. Right? Yeah. Wonder what Anderson knows about Marty Thorpe. Hello, Mike. Hey, where's your drink? Where's Nikki? Well, it's, uh, it's too early for the drink, too late for Nikki. Every time you show up, my patient's blood pressure goes up. Now, lie detectors work on that principal, Doctor. You know, Longstreet, I had a buddy went through med school with me. Five years after he hung out his shingle, he went blind as a bat. Took his wife and settled on an ice floor or something up in Alaska. Took up wood carving and fishing, lecturing, teaching. He delivered three babies and cut out some Eskimo's gallbladder. <laughs> Thought you'd like to know, just in case you get the feeling cocky sometimes. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's good advice, Dr. Kenbrook. If I, uh, if I ever need a doctor, I guess I know where to find a good one. Retiring soon, not taking on any more patients. No, I meant your friend in Alaska. Ha! <laughs> Beautiful, some of your own medicine, Doc. I hear you're going under, Jordan. What do I do now? Send my bill to Medicare? Touche. Long Street. Since you don't upset him, I hate funerals. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Driver named Marty Thorpe. You know anything about him? Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with your meeting with him. Aside from that, he's just another employee. Well, hello, darling. Hi. 
Hello, Mr. Longstreet. Mrs. Anderson, everything well with you? I'm learning the illusion of acceptance. Darling, hmm? guess who called while you were taking your nap? Hmm? Ford Blakeman. He's back, and he'll be over in a little while. Sick me for all that overtime. You're going home. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Mr. Longstreet, this is your friend, uh, uh, Jackowitz. Jack. Something wrong, Mr. Jackowitz? Mm, what should be wrong? So many vitamins I take. And your wife? Oh, just wonderful. I was wondering, uh, maybe you and me could get together. I... I think there's something you should know. Where are you? Thanks. Keep the change. What else you got? Everybody but the boss. Oh, man is right. Give you another week and you'd get us all hung.
that's the one. Jen. Uh-huh. Right. Mike, what happened to you? Hey, you should see the other guy. Mike, can I get you anything? From the looks of them, maybe we ought to start with a blood transfusion. Mr. Anderson, the police have the men who've been stealing at trailers. That's great, Mike. That's marvelous. Fill us in. If you'll excuse me, I've got to see a man about an appendix. Thorpe, talk, doctor. Who? Marty Thorpe, the driver you treated in the yard eight months ago for a minor accident, became friendly with. You mean the doctor's responsible for the thefts? Your idea, Thorpe's muscle? Now, Jordan, how was I to figure the sightless wonder here would see right through me? But why? Something more original than money, I hope. Will you get off the case if I disappoint you? Yes, money. Forty years worth lost in a down market. Sure-fire deals that kept coming up ashes. Oh, I was ahead, Jordan, way ahead. All at once, it seemed like no chance of ever retiring. You follow me, Longstreet. I had everything in the world and lost it. You know what I mean? Can you understand that? are back in their barnyard. I also put in a good word for your friend Jackowitz with my friend, Lieutenant Harmon. And I'll swap you something cool for what's inside this fat envelope. <laughs> well, drinks around the house, Duke, but I tell you, you hold on to that check. See, there's this dialysis unit that Anderson's lined up. We're going halvesies. Uh, we're going to split the cost. Um, Jackowitz, he's not officially deductible, but well, I figure if you diminish that check by half the cost of the unit, well, then uh, everybody will come out even. Uh, Tax-wise, that is. Uh... <laughs> I'll drink to that. Well, didn't you understand that, Tax? I understand. If you understand that, speak. Understand that? Good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 